My name is Spatry and I'm a former Windows Power user. I have used Microsoft products since the DOS days and I have tried every version of Windows that is out there. In April of 2011, I decided to use Linux as my main operating system. While I will admit that Windows is a decent platform for productivity and gaming, today's show will shed new light on this and hopefully educate anyone who is considering Linux as an alternative. Everything I will cover in today's show is based on my own personal experience. I make no false claims or exaggerations. Also, I make no guarantees that you will have the same results that I did. Now with all of that out of the way, today's topic is Linux does what when don't, and that begins right now on Spatry's Cup of Linux. <laughs> all right, the number one thing that brought me to Linux was viruses. Let's face it. Viruses are way out of hand in Windows. There are over a million of them, and new ones are released into the wild every day. Today, I looked on Wikipedia just to see how many known rootkits, trojans, viruses, and worms there are on Linux, and counted only 47 of them. Combined! Most of that malware has been depreciated by the Linux kernels we use today. Linux is secure by design. Without root access, malware cannot harm your system files. Most Linux users would never give an unsolicited pop-up their root password. We would rather open up a terminal, kill the process that generated it, and then delete the file. Or at least that's something I would personally do uh, if that were to happen. I've not had a virus on my Linux system, and I'm not saying Linux is invulnerable. Any computer can get a virus, but viruses on Linux are rare. I've yet to find an antivirus program for Linux that runs in real time. I doubt I would use it, though. I do not consider viruses to be a real threat on my system. When I decided to switch to Linux two and a half years ago, I tried a distribution called Mint. I burned the image to a CD, booted my computer from it, and was pleased to see that all of my hardware was working in Linux, and I did not even install it yet. One thing that really surprised me was that I never saw a Linux distribution do this before. What's more, I was able to power my TV card, a USB mic, a game controller, and other peripherals without needing a driver. The Linux kernel matures also at an alarming rate. With each new release, more hardware is being supported. Unless you're running exotic hardware that is not well known or hardware that was recently released, Linux should power all of your devices without much difficulty. In cases where there is no support for your hardware, you can check with the manufacturer. Or better yet, go online onto the forums and find out what others have done to get that hardware working. I had to actually do that with my Kodak printer, and today that printer is working great in Linux, even though Kodak refuses to provide support for the Linux platform. Linux is community driven. This means many eyes are on the source code, bringing new innovations every day. One of my biggest pet peeves with Windows was stability. Sure, if a program crashed, I could press Control Alt Delete to run the task manager and attempt to stop the program, but that did not always work. Sometimes I had to reboot the computer. You hear me say this all the time reboot, 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 wash, rinse, and repeat. Linux rarely requires rebooting. Even after installing most updates, the only time I reboot is when I get a new kernel. My computer runs for weeks on end without ever needing to be shut down, which is something I could never do in Windows. Linux serves up most of the websites you visit on the internet. Those machines run for months, even years, without being shut down. That says a lot to me. Linux is as stable as it gets. The software giants want you to believe that sharing is wrong. It is really disheartening when you think about all the digital restriction tactics that the software companies are using to hog up your system resources. Applications dialing home as soon as you launch them, treating you like you're a thief, all under the guise of combating piracy. Linux is free as in freedom. Most distributions are free of charge. There is no catch. 
Linux earns its money through donations, grants, and pay support. You can copy Linux and share it with your friends. You can change the code and make it better. Then you can share it or even sell it as long as the freedoms you were given remain with that software. For example, you can make your own Linux distribution, print out documents, and provide support for a fee. This is what Canonical, Novell, Red Hat, and SUSE are doing. Keep in mind, just about any software that is in the enterprise or paid for distributions are available in their free counterparts. For example, a free version of Red Hat would be Fedora Linux. We all know how good Windows Update is. It only updates Windows. Maybe it may have a few driver updates in its stores, but will it update your video games, your Firefox browser, your QuickTime viewer, your Adobe products? Heck no! Instead, all you have is this junkware running at startup, bogging more of your resources so that those individual programs can check online and nag you about updates. Oh, and get this. One time I had a six hour video rendering job running in Sony Vegas and I figured I'd just let that run while I went to work. I came home only to find out that Windows installed updates and rebooted my machine. A few hours of machine rendering time ended up being lost. Thank you Microsoft. But all kidding aside, in Linux we have an updated we have an update manager which updates everything you have installed on your system. Your games, your browser, file manager, all of it without needing a reboot. Unless the kernel is updated, but that does not happen often and the computer does not reboot unless you tell it to do so. Most Linux distributions have a comprehensive set of applications pre-installed, but there are instances when you need programs that you cannot live without. Most Linux distributions have a software center where you can easily find free applications listed in categories. You can find educational programs to give your kids an edge in school, games to amuse you in your free time, multimedia applications for editing, audio video editing, or backing up DVDs, office suites, internet applications, and I have not even touched the tip of the iceberg. Why search the internet for programs when you have it all in a central location? Be sure to make that software center your friend. Linux desktops can do things you could never do with Windows without having to pay for expensive third-party software. With Windows, you are locked into the desktop experience Microsoft wants you to have. How about that new Metro interface in Windows 8? Yeah, I know what you're thinking. In Linux, your desktop is a set of applications unlike Windows where the desktop is a major component of the OS. Let's say you try Ubuntu and you do not like their Unity desktop. You can change that. You could opt for the K-Desktop environment or no. If you're really geeky, maybe a text-based tiling window manager will be more to your liking. This is a screen capture of my desktop. I am using XFCE with KWIN for visual effects. Everything you are seeing from my taskbar to theme and effects are all customized. I also have tutorials on my channel showing you how you can do things like this with your Linux desktop. It's all about choice. Linux lets you tailor your computing experience to fit your needs and balance your workflow. As a software guru, I like to install and uninstall apps on a regular basis. What can I say? I'm a sucker for new software. But another thing that really bugged me about Windows was it would get bloated and bogged down, even with regular maintenance. I had to reinstall Windows a minimum of twice a year. In Linux, this does not happen. We do not have to defragment our hard drives because we have a better file system that places files on the hard drive in such a way that there's room for expansion. One thing Linux users enjoy is a system that runs just as fast as the day they installed it. It doesn't matter how long, a few months, a few years. Linux lets you spend more time enjoying your computer and less time reinstalling over and over again. Windows requires more and more hardware power as its version number increases. So if you want to keep running Windows, you need to constantly buy new hardware. Now some people have a need for speed and want to be able to run the latest high-end games or be able to have faster rendering times from creating videos. 
But for many users who surf the web, read and write emails, or socialize online, what's the point of buying a new computer every few years? Linux runs perfectly well on older, or as I call it, legacy hardware. Try installing Windows 7 on a Pentium 2. It will either refuse to install or leave you waiting for about a half hour between each click. Of course, Linux won't make a race winner out of your 12-year-old computer, but it will run very well on it and allow you to perform everyday tasks just fine. And of course, there are several distributions available out there with modern kernels specifically designed to breathe new life into that machine you have collecting dust in the attic. Thanks to game companies like the Humble Bundle, Dezora, and Steam, Linux supports more games than ever. It is proving to be a top-notch gaming platform. New titles are coming to Linux almost daily. And I can say I'm a happy camper. My favorite series from Egosoft, X3 Reunion, The Terran Conflict, and Albion Prelude are fully supported on Linux and they run fabulously well. Linux also has a compatibility layer called Wine. Wine is not an emulator. I'm able to get some of my old favorites running natively in Linux, such as The Witcher, Homeworld 2, and Freelancer. And on the application side of it, I'm able to run Flash, Fireworks, and FL Studio to create content that I can use in Caden Live for my video productions that I put here on YouTube. These programs run better in Linux than they did for me in Windows. Now, for those finicky games and applications that will not run under Wine, we have VirtualBox and VMware. VirtualBox does desktop apps and some 3D games well, but VMware definitely has the edge in terms of 3D acceleration for gaming. Now, you will never hear me say, don't use Windows, because I feel that it is acceptable for most people. I spent most of my computer career in Windows. But if you want a challenge and an enriching user experience, Linux is the way to go. And for those of you who are considering Linux, some of the easiest distributions to use out there are Zorin, Linux Mint, Ubuntu, Linux Lite, or Pinguy OS. Just one thing to keep in mind, though there may be familiar characteristics Linux is not Windows. There's a little bit of a learning curve, but there is plenty of support on the forums. If you have patience and motivation, you will get out of Linux more than what you put into it, and that has been my personal experience. Mr. Google taught me how to use Linux, and I cannot thank the community enough for this work of human genius, which has enriched my life. Mm -hmm.